second. Here we go. If you at home would like to be on this stage and play for these very exciting prizes, all you have to do is be in the studio when I run into the audience and ask a question like, what cartoon sailor has a girlfriend named Olive Oil? Who can do it for me? How about Tom? Stand up for me, Toby. What's the answer? That's right, Toby. You're a runner. Well done. Can we need somebody else now? Who can do it for me? Who can do it for me? Who wants to be a runner? Who wants to be a runner? Okay, Tammy Lynn, stand up for me, Tammy. Here we go. If blue is for baby boys, what is the color for baby girls? Pink. That's right, Tammy Lynn, you're a runner. Go on down. There you go. Okay, let's go over here now for some. Okay, I'm looking for another runner. Who wants to do it? Who wants to be able? Okay, Stuart, give it a shot. Here we go, Stuart. What kind of animal gives us milk and says moo? Cow. That's right, Stuart. Okay, looking for one more person. Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? Okay, over to you, Michael. Here we go, Michael. Here's your question. During what holiday do we celebrate by going trick or treat? Halloween. That's right, Michael. You're a runner too. Which means we've got four runners and we're all ready to go. Here we go, audience. Five, four, three, two, run! Hi, everybody. I'm Andrew Parker, and welcome to Five, Four, Three, Two, Run. Okay, it's time to meet our first four runners, starting with Toby. Hi there, Toby. Nice haircut. What made you have a haircut like that? Um, because my dad coaches a football team, and he, I have a guy that I really like, so I got a haircut like his. Just like his. Well, thanks very much for coming on the game, Toby. How about you, Tammy Lynn? Hey, is it okay if I call you Tammy? Yeah, sure. Kids at school call me Tammy, so. Great. Well, thanks very much to you two for being on the game. Okay. How about you, Stuart? Do you have any hobbies of any kind? Yeah, I collect stamps, and uh, I like to read, and I play chess. What kind of books do you read? I read mysteries and comedy stories. Oh, okay, good. We'll have a good time on the, on the game today. How about you, Michael? What are your favorite things to do? Uh, I like to play soccer and mm -hmm. I collect coins. What, do you play on any soccer teams of any kind? Uh, yeah, the Rowdies. Oh, the Rowdies. Okay, well, all four of you have a good time today. Players, let me explain the game. We're going to be asking you questions and showing you possible answers on these monitors. If you run to a correct answer, you're still in the game. However, if you choose a wrong answer, watch out, because you may be surprised by what comes out of the tube over your head. Now, sometimes com what comes out can get a little messy, so that's why we've asked you to put on those capes, okay? Let's get started with your first subject. Your first subject is months that have 31 days. All these months, except one of them, has 31 days. The possibilities are March, April, May, July, and August. This time, before you can make your selection, you have to run up to the bin. Get one of the beach balls inside the bin, just like this one. Run back to where you're standing now. Put the beach ball down. Get down on your hands and knees, and with your head, push the beach ball to the bin, okay? Once you get to the bin, throw the beach ball in the bin, and then make the selection that you want. Ready, audience? Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Everyone avoided April right away. Let's see what that means. Toby, August. We've got Tammy at May. Michael's in March here, and Stewart's in July. Toby, are you happy with August? Do you want to trade? Move into the empty seat or stay with where you are? Stay. Toby wants to stay. Tammy, how about you? Stay. Stay. Okay, how about you, Michael? Stay. Where would you like to trade? Move into the empty seat or try to trade with somebody else? Trade with someone else. Okay, well, who would you like to trade with? Um, okay, Tammy, would you like to trade? Stay. Oh, Tammy wants to stay, unfortunately, Michael. How about I you? I want to stay. Okay. Everyone ends up staying where they are. Michael ends up in March, even though he wanted to trade. Let's find out what that means. Now, if April is the incorrect answer, all four of you will go on to your next question. However, if one of you is sitting in the wrong answer, you're going to get a surprise out of the tube over your head. Let's see what happens. Uh-oh. Put your hands on your plungers. Ready? One, two, three, push. Oh! Michael looking up there, but April was the incorrect answer, which means all four of you go on. 30 days past September, April, June, and November. All of you were right. We're going to be back after these words with our four flares. We've still got 
got four players left. We thought someone would be fooled by that month question, but we've got four sharp contestants here. But no matter what happens, no one can make it to our special grand prize round. This time, their subject is baby animals. And the possibilities are goblet, signet, piglet, and kitten. Okay, this time, before you can make your selection, what you've got to do is carefully run up to the bin. In the bin, you'll find a helmet just like this. You put the helmet, you run back to the striped yellow line. You put the helmet on your head, you look silly like I do now. Then you roll yourself up in the hose. Once you get to the yellow line, you take the silly helmet and the even sillier looking rope or hose or whatever it is off you, throw the whole schmear into the bin, and then make the selection you want. Okay, here we go, audience, you know what to do. Five, four, three, two, one. That's right, you're done. Okay. Roll yourself up. There you go. Your arms rolled up. There you go. You got it. You're rolling it around your throat. Are you all right? Okay. There you go. You got it. Okay. Oh, there's mayhem at the bin. Crazy mayhem at the bin. And there we go. Oh, take your helmet off. There we go, Michael. Throw it in the bin. Okay, phew, oh, mayhem today. Stuart manages to make it in first to Piglet. Toby, you're at Kitten. Michael's at Signet. And we're down here at Goblet with Tammy. Okay, you guys. Now, there are no empty seats, which means if you want to move, you've got to try to trade with somebody. But you can stay where you are if you want to. Toby, what do you want to do? Yeah, Toby wants to stay. You move down here to Stuart. What do you want to do? Yeah. You want to change? Or you want, you want to stay? Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Michael, how about you? Michael also wants to stay? Okay, I don't, who would you like to trade with? And I'll see how they, if they've changed their minds. Who would you like to trade with? Stuart. Stuart, Stuart, you changed your mind? No, I'm sorry, Tammy. Stuart hasn't changed his mind, which means you've got goblet. We're going to find out what's going to happen. We're going to have to say goodbye to somebody right now. Tammy's got an expression on her face that makes me think she thinks she's the one. We'll find out what's going to happen. Good luck to everyone. Ready? One, two, three, push. Oh, Tammy, you were right. Goblet is not. Oh, you got some peanuts, though, and this gift. Thanks very much for playing the game. Goblet is actually a type of glass. Stay there just for a, a second. All the rest of them are baby animals. A signet is a swan. A piglet is a type of uh, pig's baby, a swine. And a kitten is a cat. So all three of you get to go on to the next question. Thanks very much to you. Tammy. Come on down. Tammy, here we go. Tammy, you just go on there. And now it's on to our final question of the round. This is the final question before the bonus round. This time the subject is Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. And the possibilities are Red Sonja, Red Herring, and Red Heat. Before you can make your selection, what you've got to do is pick up the plate. We're looking for Arnold Schwarzenegger movies, Stuart. You pick up the plate in front of you with the glasses balanced on it, okay? You walk over or run as fast as you can to the bin. The trick is you can't let the cups on the plate fall. If they do, you have to put them back on the plate, balance them again, and run. Once you get to the bin, you throw the plate and the cups in the bin, and then you choose the seat you want. Okay? Here we go, audience. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Speedy obstacle there. We have one cup out here. We'll just put it back in there. Speedy obstacle. All three managed to go in quickly. Remember, once again, there are no empty seats. Stewart's at Red Sonia. Toby's at Red Herring. And Michael's at Red Heat. Stewart, do you want to try to negotiate a trade or stay where you are? You like to, you'd, like to, you'd like to trade with Michael? Oh, Michael would like to trade? Michael's jumping up and down with joy at the idea of a trade. Oh, Michael thinks he's done quite a good trade here. How about you, Toby? How do you... Stay. You want to stay where you are. Toby decides to stay, and you obviously are happy with the trade you made, too. We've got three people who seem happy with their choices. Let's see what's going to happen. But one of you must be wrong, because there's only three seats. Put your hands on your buzzers. Only two people will go on to play in our grand prize round. Let's see how it's going to turn out. Good luck, everyone. One, two, three, push! Yeah. Oh, no! Toby, who had a chance to trade. Stay there just for a second, Stuart. Toby, you had a chance to trade, but you didn't. You were pretty confident with red herring. There's your towel for you. You got the whipping cream. Stuart and Michael, you traded, but you traded correct answers with each other. Well done. No, what, Michael? I saw the show. 
Oh, you saw the show. Okay, wise move. I, 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 did, I just picked. I didn't really well, Stuart and Michael are going to get to go on to our grand prize round. Toby, well done. Red Heat and Red Sonja are on Schwarzenegger movies, and you've just found out what a red herring is. And we have something special for our home viewers to see. play our game, but we want you to play along wherever you live in Canada. So it's time for a question just for you. Try this one and see how well you do. Your subject for your home puzzle is provincial capitals. And now we want to show you the possible answers. They are Victoria, St. John's, Fredericton, Toronto, and Calgary. Before you try to tell us the correct answers, let's see what everyone here in our studio thinks. Audience, when I call out an answer, you applaud for the ones you think are right. We'll see which answer gets the most votes. How many think Victoria is a provincial capital? What about St. John's? What about Fredericton? What about Toronto? How about Calgary? Well, it looks like our audience thinks that Calgary would be the answer that would get the surprise, and they're right. Calgary's the wrong one. Victoria, St. John's, Fredericton, and Toronto are all correct answers. And now it's time for you to hear this. Promotional consideration by Sharp, makers of a fashionable radio cassette recorder with auto stop, a built-in loudness circuit, and an easy-to-read slide rule tuning dial. From Sharp, the birthplace of unique audio fashion. Okay, Canada, it's time for you to try again with a puzzle made just for all of you at home, plus one lucky audience player. This time, the subject for you on 5432 Run is buttons on a telephone. And the possibilities for you to consider are ABC, JKL, QRS, and TU TUV, and WXY. Now, once again, before you try to guess, let's see what somebody here in our studio thinks. This is Josh. How are you today, Josh? Fine. Did you hear the possibilities? Yes. Okay, I'll read them to you again, and you just tell me each one if you think it's uh, a, a combination on a telephone or not, okay? okay. ABC. Yes. yes or no? Yes, okay. JKL? Yes. QRS? No. Oh, TUV? Yeah. WXY? Yes. Well, Josh was right in saying QRS. All the rest of them are, in fact, combinations in a telephone. Josh, where are you from? Pitt Meadows. Pitt Meadows in, in BC, right? Yes. Yeah. So you came all the way here to the studio to see the show. Yeah. Well, thanks very much for coming. And for coming and for answering the question for us, we've got something for you. In fact, that's something that we have for you is supplied by these folks. Some prizes supplied by Chieftain, makers of Grab and Dragons. Hook a ring onto the dragon's tongue, pull back his tail, and let the ring drop onto the dragon's back. Grab and Dragons is the fast based neck bending tail wagon ring grab and dragon game from Chieftain Products. Welcome back. Now, we've already chosen two players to go for our prizes in the bonus round. Now, if you want a chance to play for some of those prizes, all you have to do is answer this question What two days of the week make up the weekend? Two days of the week that make up the weekend. Okay, Paul. Stand up for Saturday it. Saturday and Sunday. That's right, Paul. Go down. I heard both of the answers there. You're a runner. Now we're looking for someone else. Who can do it, Farley? Who can do it? Okay, how about you, Jenna? Here's your question. What language am I speaking if I say merci beaucoup? French. That's right, Jenna. You're a runner. Okay, let's move over here now. Who can we find? Who wants to be a runner? Who wants to? Okay, Scott. How about Scott? Here's your question, Scott. How many wheels are there on a tricycle? Three. That's right, Scott. You're a runner. We got one more. We're trying to find one more person. Who can it be? Who can it be? How about how about Diane up here? Here we go, Diane. What girl entered the home of the three bears, ate their porridge, and slept in the baby bear's bed? Goldilocks. That's right, Diane. You're a runner. That means we've got all four runners, and we're ready to play. Here we go, audience. Five, four, three, two, run! It's time once again to learn something about our four more players. First up on deck is Paul. Tell us something interesting about yourself, Paul. I have a Japanese student, and her name is Satomi, and she's going to stay with us for three weeks. Oh, great. Well, have fun there, and have fun here, too. Thanks very much, Paul. How about you, Jenna? You, you seem to answer that question about merci beaucoup pretty quick. Uh, do you speak French? Yes. Where'd you learn that? 
I study French in school. Oh, well, très bien. Thanks very much for coming on the show. Oh, ho, ho. Thanks very much for coming on the show, Jenna. How about you, Scott? What's your favorite thing to do? Well, I climb trees a lot. Yeah? Do you do anything other than that? What, what sort of trees do you climb? Any accomplishments? Well, high trees. I've climbed a 300-foot tree behind my house. In the You've got bush. a 300-tree behind your house? Yeah. Did you do anything else? Um, I act, yeah. I've oh. been on Beans Baxter, 21 Jump Street, Nights in the City, some commercials. I'll get your 8 by 10 later. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> Thanks for talking to us. How about you, Diane? Do you have any hobbies of any kind? Well, I like to collect royal souvenirs and I like to skate. Great. Well, have fun in the game. Okay, it's time for your question, players. Here we go on to your subject, and this is the second round. Your subject is Smurfs, and the possibilities are grouchy, sleepy, brainy, hefty, and vanity. Okay? This time, before you can make your selection, what we're going to get you to do, see those wooden skis in front of you? Well, what you have to do is put one foot in each boot and ski up to the bin in front of you. Just, you know, and if you can't get your foot completely in, if you're running out of time, then just sort of try to slide across them. Whatever, as long as you just ski up to the bin, throw the skis in the bin, and then make your selection. Okay, you understand? Here we go, everyone. You know what to do now. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, try to get them in. If you can't get them in, then just push them along. There you go. That's exactly how I ski anyway. There we go. Jump those around. Push them in. Okay, that's right. That's sort of how I walk sometimes, too. There you go. You got all the skis in there. Okay. Vanity's been left open, but Scott's at hefty. We've got Jenna at brainy, Paul's at sleepy, and Diana's at grouchy. Now you can trade with somebody else. You can move into the empty seat. You can stay where you are. What do you want to do, Scott? Scott decisively wants to stay. How about you, Jenna? What do you want to do? He wants to stay. How about you, Paul? Paul wants to stay. How about you, Diane? Everyone wants to stay where they are. That means vanity is left open. Now, if vanity is the incorrect answer, and you've all chosen wisely, that means that all of you will go on to the next question. If vanity is a correct answer, and one of the other ones is wrong, then one of you is going to get a surprise and a goodbye. Let's find out what happens. Put your hands on your plungers. One, two, three, push! Oh, no! Oh, no! Paul, vanity was, in fact, one of the Smurfs. You could have moved into it, but you decided to stay with Sleepy. Maybe you were thinking of one of the Snow White Dwarfs. Thanks very much for playing. We do have a gift for you. Stay there just for a second. Diane, Jenna, and Scott, you get to move on to the next question. Okay, come on. Now, Paul, you can move on, too. Come on, I'll down there. Thank you very much for playing, Paul. There you go up there. This time, the subject is types of boats. Types of boats. And the possibilities are dinghy, sloop, pullman, and junk. This time, before you can make your selection, you see that basket in front of you? Well, you have to sit in it, first of all. Just sit right down in it. And once you're sitting in the extremely comfortable basket, you push yourself up using your feet and your hands until you get to the bin. Then you get out, you throw the basket in the bin, and make your selection, OK? Here we go, audience. Five, four, three, two, run! Okay. Go to sit in it. There we go. Right in there. That's right. That's right. Can you push yourself? You can't quite. Okay, I'll, I'll hold it for you. Okay, it's all right. You can run now. That's all right. You can run now. Oh, well. There you go. Makes your selection. Okay, Jenna takes Pullman at the last second. Junk is left open. Jenna takes Pullman. Scott has sloop. Diane has dinghy. What's it going to be, Jenna? Stay where you are. Try to trade or move into the empty one. Stay. Stay? Okay. How about you, Scott? What are you going to do? Okay. How about you, Diane? Stay. Diane decides to stay as well, which means now if junk is not a type of boat, then all three of you go on to the next question. However, if one of you is sitting in one of the incorrect answers, we're going to have to say goodbye to you, and something will come out of the tube over your head. Let's see what happens. Put your hands on the plungers. One, two, three, push! Oh, no! Pullman is not a type of boat. You could have moved into the empty seat. Junk is a type of boat, as is sloop and dinghy. Pullman is a type of train. It's a coach and a train. But there you go. Here's a gift for you, Jenna. Just stay where you are for a second. Scott and Diane, you're going to move on to the next question. Let's go! The final question of the round. Only one of these two people will go on to play in our grand, maybe both of them will go on to play in our grand prize round. Let's find out what happens. 
Real people from history is our subject this time, and the possibilities are Calamity Jane, Joan of Arc, and Helen of Troy. It's a tricky one, and our obstacle may be a little tricky too. This time, what you have to do is run up to the bin. In the bin, somewhere under that mess, you're gonna find a burlap sack. You take your burlap sack, you run back to the yellow striped line, okay? You put the burlap sack over your head. If you can find the opening, there it is. You put the burlap sack over your head. You try to introduce the rest of the stunt with the burlap sack over your head. No, you don't. All you have to do is then try to go with the burlap sack over your head to the bin. You throw the burlap sack in the bin and you make your selection, okay? Here we go. Here we go, audience. Five, four, three, two, one. There you go, you got him right away. Walk real slowly, it's a blindfold there. Walk high. Oh, mackerel. Scott, you moved quickly to Helen of Troy. Are you psychic at all? Because that was like a blindfold you were yeah. wearing. You are psychic. Okay, well, that explains that. You're sitting at Helen of Troy. Calamity Jane is empty. Diane, you can sit down there in Joan of Arc. Okay, now you can move into the empty seat. You can try to trade. What do you want to do? Scott's going to stay where he is. Okay, Scott decides to stay there. We move past the empty Calamity Jane. How about you, Diane? Trade. You like to trade? Do you want to trade with, go to try to see if uh, Scott wants to trade with Helen of Troy or do you want to move to the empty seat? I'll go to the empty seat. Okay, Diane decides to move to the empty seat, leaving Joan of Arc empty. Now, here we come. It's down to this. Who's going to go and join Stuart and Michael? Will it be both of them or will it only be one of them and go on to play in our grand prize round? And who's going to get a surprise, if anyone, okay? Because if it's Joan of Arc that's the em that is the incorrect answer, both of you go on to our grand prize round. Let's see what happens. Good luck to both of you. Put your hands on your plungers. One, two, three, Push! Oh no! Oh no! Oh, Scott! Oh no! You got the green goo! The famous green goo. Here's a towel. In fact, maybe you should take two. There you go. It's also a hair gel substitute, so you're fine. There you go, Scott. Thanks very much for playing. You do get a gift in front of you. Helen of Troy is not a, a real person from history. Actually, Helen, Helen of Troy is a myth. It's the mythical daughter of Zeus. Diane, you were right. Calamity Jane is a real person, as is Joan of Arc. Diane, guess what? You're going to go on and play in our grand prize move. Scott could have moved to the empty seat, but he didn't. You're going to go on and play to the grand prize bonus round right after we take this break. <laughs> Each of you is definitely getting a prize. It could be the board games in front of you. But as you know, there are also four more prizes. I want you to choose one as I describe them to our home audience. From Hanamex, the 35DL compact camera with dual lens and built-in flash. Use the telephoto or wide-angle lens to get the best photography. Make sure you have the Hanamex 35DL. From Gold Star, a portable AM FM cassette stereo with a five band equalizer and detachable speakers. Make sure you get the great sound on the move with Gold Star, the brightest star in electronics. From Bushnell, the spectacular star machine, your personable portable planetarium for astronomers of all ages. Discover the universe. Join the Blast Off Club with the spectacular star machine from Bushnell. From Emerson, this beautiful stereo system featuring dual cassette, AM FM radio, and turntable. Double way to your heart's content. Enjoy great music from Emerson. Now you're going to use the plungers on your desk to reveal the gift you want. If no one else has picked that gift, you only have to answer one more question and it's yours. But if you sit, pick the same prize as somebody else, then we're going to have to have a face-off to see who wins it, okay? Now you've already locked your selections into the computer. Let's see what you chose. Stuart, push your plunger. Stereo. Okay, Diane, what did you pick? Ah, oh, stereo. We're going to have to have a face-off here. Michael, what did you pick? A three-way face-off. Okay. Now I have a set of questions for all three of you. Whoever answers the last correct question wins the stereo you've all selected. You must answer that question within four seconds, okay? Here's the first question, and it's over to you, Stuart. What cartoon cutie has friends like Raspberry Tart and Orange Blossom who help her in her struggle against the evil purple pie man? Strawberry Shortcake. That's right, Stuart. Over to Diane. What British rock group from the 60s had members named John, Paul, George, and Ringo? British rock group, I need an answer. Oh, I'm sorry, Diane. It's the Beatles. Over to Michael now with a question for you. You do get the board game, though. Okay, Michael, here's your question. Moby Dick was a great white what? 
Sheep. Oh, Michael, I'm sorry, it's Whale. You do get the board game, though. Diane gets a board game, and Stuart gets the stereo, and you might be a winner, too, the next time we all get together and say five, four, three, two, one! If you like this, make sure to subscribe to my channel for more and check out my Facebook page for other exciting content.